Hey everybody, thought we'd uh, switch it up a little bit and I would do this from my recliner tonight. So hopefully I won't bounce it too much. <laughs> oh goodness, what a day, what a day, what a day. Anyhow, just waiting on anybody to arrive. For those of you watching this in replay, my name is Gina and I am an e-commerce reseller. I sell on eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, Macari, and Facebook Marketplace. I also have a booth at a local antique mall. And I've been full-time since September. I've been reselling for a little over a year now. And... Uh, that's about it. Give you a little history while we wait. I started off on Etsy, uh, solely on Etsy. And um, then I went to eBay. And then I decided to branch out and do multiple platforms. Hi, Celestine. How are you? Okay. I was just telling everybody I decided to do the uh, armchair live stream this time around so it's probably going to get a little bit dark in here but i'm going to have another window open most of the time anyhow so it's all good but this is more comfortable tonight so oh goodness i was hoping celestine since you're the only one in here right now i was hoping that since you won that uh, coin purse that I would win the other one. I just thought that would be really cool, but it didn't happen. <laughs> Anyhow, you'll have to shoot me a picture of that coin purse when you get it because she kept saying purple, but it looked blue on my screen. I will also say that my title on this um, live is a little misleading because I put Macari down for what sold. And I could have sworn I sold something on Macari the past week, but I haven't. So it's just going to be Facebook marketplace and, uh, eBay. <laughs> oh goodness. I've got to figure out something. Let's see if I can get this glare off my glasses. Nope. That's not happening. It's coming in through the window. I thought maybe it was my TV because I've got my TV on even though there's nothing on it. But I sh turned it off and it's still glaring. Let's see here. How can I fix this? That doesn't work. How does Facebook Marketplace work? Well, that's a good question and something I might as well answer while I'm sitting here waiting to see if anybody else comes in. Um... Facebook Marketplace is similar to eBay, but not. Um, the listing process is simpler than eBay, but more difficult to. <laughs> I know I'm not answering the question very well. It is similar and a little bit easier. Um, the only big difference really between the two platforms other than reach, um, because I do believe that you still have a much higher uh, chance of finding the right customer with eBay, is that eBay, at least with managed payments, and pretty much everybody's on managed payments now with eBay, um, with managed payments, you get paid for your sale approximately 24 to 48 hours after you make the sale. With Facebook Marketplace, you don't get paid until approximately three days after the person receives the item. I mean, you get, the sale is complete, but Facebook holds the money until about three days after they receive the item. So if you're needing the money quickly, it's not very good. But 
If you're worried about a return, it's really good because you never see the money. And so you don't have to make it up if you have to refund the person. That's what the three days is for, is to give the buyer time to decide if they like the item or if it arrived broken or something like that. And then they get the money directly back from Facebook. Yeah, it's basically the same as Mercari. Mercari is the same way, you know, three days after. Um, actually, Mercari is a little bit different because it's three days after if you don't get rated by the buyer. If you get rated by the buyer, then you get your money immediately after they receive the item, you know, after they, after they rate it, you know, they'll rate the transaction. So yeah, they're very similar. Um, I will say though, and I don't sell a ton on Macari, but I will say that I will usually get an email from Macari saying that the item has been delivered and that evening, if not that hour, I will get rated by the buyer. And I get my money. So, yeah. Well, we appreciate those who rate quickly. <laughs> Definitely makes a big difference. So, well, it looks like you are going to be it, at least for a while, unless Paul or Cameron. I'm trying very hard not to say Cam. If Paul or Cameron show up, or Candy, have you talked to Candy? Because I haven't seen her in a while. And I just wondered how she was doing. She still comments and stuff on my Facebook posts, but I don't see her in here very often. But so anyhow, I guess we will go ahead and get started. I want to bring up my phone so that I can keep an eye on. So anyhow, ooh, got to turn the volume down um, so I can keep an eye on chat. You've seen her somewhere? I haven't. I don't. Seems like I did see her in a chat in the last day or two, but I can't remember. I, I watch too many chats. Well, speak of the devil. I was just telling her how careful I am being, trying not to shorten your name, Cameron. <laughs> I'm trying very hard. All right, well, let's see here. Figure out what I'm doing. I was telling her that I kind of lied on my um, on my title of this live because I said I would be showing what sold on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and Mercari, but I don't have any Mercari sales. I could have sworn I did, but I don't. So, anywho, let's see what I'm doing here. And there we go. Get this thing open. There it is. So we will start. I need to make this larger. And therefore, no more chat. Let's start off with my Facebook sales. Um, Cameron um, Celestine was asking me how Facebook Marketplace works as opposed to like eBay. And I was giving her... Pretty much, basically saying it works pretty much the same except for payment. And I'm not sure if you do Facebook Marketplace, Cameron, or not. But if you have any other tidbits of wisdom, please feel free to put it in chat. Anyhow, uh, at the beginning of the month, one of the first things, let's see, can I adjust this? No, of course not. One of the first things that I sold was this, I think, hilarious mug. Some people have had messaged me on Marketplace telling me how in poor taste it was, but you got to laugh at things, you know? I know. I knew I was an unwanted baby when I saw my bath toys were a toaster and a radio. <laughs> I think it's great. And it would be the perfect gag gift. But um, anyhow, I've had this thing listed for quite some time on multiple platforms and all I got was hate on Facebook Marketplace. But hey, somebody bought it and they paid full price. So I will take that. So sold it for $15. I think I was all in for maybe 49 cents. So uh, I can live with that. Sorry, I'm looking at my phone, seeing what chat is saying. All right. 
Next thing that I sold on Marketplace was a doll. Hallelujah. I sold one of my mother's dolls. <laughs> and honestly, I sold this really quickly. I think I sold it. Well, I had it listed on eBay for a few days and then finally got it cross posted to Marketplace. And I think I sold it that night. So uh, $20. I did take an offer. $2 off of my asking price. And this is a uh, Goebel Charlotte Beige um, Karen Kennedy doll. Can you get enough names in there? Goebel Charlotte Beige by Karen Kennedy doll. Stolen Kisses Sugar Sweetums is that doll's name. I don't know how they name these things, but I'm just glad to get it out of my house. What's the next thing? Yeah, see, I actually, I listed a bunch of dolls on eBay and kind of slept on it for a few days before I got them on, on Marketplace, and then they just sold, sold, sold. So the next thing that I sold was this F&B Cupid doll. It is vinyl, not porcelain, and uh, celebrating the 90th, 90, ooh, 90th birthday of the Cupid doll. And I had a Cupid doll when I was growing up, but it was porcelain. It was, oh only three or four inches tall. But anyhow, I was glad to get this sold. Again, it sold for asking price of $30. Very happy with that. And then I was, I think I was in Paul's chat. I think it was Paul's live. Um, and I was listing alongside, not, not, was it? Oh, it was the live that I actually got to participate in as kind of a co-host type thing. And um, I couldn't, I was thinking that this was a Fenton piece. And um, someone came in, gosh darn it, I can't remember who it was now. And he told me it was Kanawa. And sure as heck it was. And uh, listed it again, started, I, I list everything first on eBay. And then I cross post. And just because I'm more familiar with the listing process on eBay. And uh, so it was a few days after that that I got this listed on Facebook. And it sold, gosh, within 24 hours. So $15. I think I'm pretty sure I bought this at Goodwill for, I think, $2. Can't remember for sure. Yeah, you ship and it's just like eBay as far as um, shipping and everything, except that um, you can do prepaid postage. You don't have to, but you can do prepaid postage. And I really like that unless you um, don't get the weight right when you make your listing. And then, you know, it's prepaid, so it pre-generates a certain weight that whatever you put on the listing. And if you're overweight, it can be kind of a hassle. But yeah, you, I like it because you don't see, um, you don't see that money. So it's not like it's in your pocket, back out of your pocket when you print the label. You just don't see the money. It, it's paid by the buyer and Marketplace keeps it and uses it to pay for that label. So... This, pretty sure I listed this on one of my lives, and this does not work correctly. And I did put it in the description. Um, in fact, right there. Please read. This player works, but the belt needs tightened. I played a tape in it and plays very slowly. Buying as is. We will see because we all know that buying as is doesn't protect the seller at all. Um, but uh, hopefully they read that and... We'll know how to fix it. I was going to fix it myself and I just didn't have time. I'll be real honest with you. But um, I got this in a box lot at an auction. I had zero money into this really. I think I got the entire box and it was a box of uh, sealed cassette tapes, audio cassette tapes for like a dollar, maybe two. I can't remember. And so I really had no money into this and uh, sold it for $19. And another doll. 
I can't seem to sell them on eBay, but I sure as heck can sell them all right on, uh, on Marketplace. Um, and this is a Marsha doll. I'm sorry, but this is an ugly doll. My mom loved it, so I should love it, but I really don't. <laughs> it's an ugly doll. Um, I took an offer on it because I was just in the groove. I, I want to get these out of my house. And I want to get the others that I still haven't even looked at out of my friend's storage unit. So I took $20 for it. Very happy with that. And then just today, I sold this ceramic um, covered wagon planter. And it's unmarked, so I don't know who the maker is. Couldn't find anything on it. But sold it for $13. I think I paid a buck for it at a garage sale. So if I, if I can turn a dollar into 13, I'm very happy. But I sold that. I actually need to get that shipped out tonight. And final marketplace sale was, again, I sold it today. And I need to ship it out tonight. But that's an easy, easy ship. It's a Wilson's Girls T-Ball Glove. Really pretty pink and teal. Some little girl is going to love it. And I actually sold it to a fellow Kansan, which doesn't sound like anything big, but it's amazing how rarely I sell to someone else in Kansas. Always shocks me when it happens. But anyhow, sold it for $10. I bought it at a garage sale a couple of weeks ago for a dollar. And I'm going to come back and see you guys. Hey, Darlene, how are you? See, this is why I came back to the full screen so I could catch up, even though I've got it over here. I have old eyes, so I'm really having to squint to look at my phone. Oh, my nose is itching. Oh, allergy season is wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, I'm going to catch up on chat real quick. I don't think I have a whole lot to catch up on. Sold a cargo dry bag on Facebook today for 80 bucks. Nice sale. But what's a cargo dry bag? I'm confused. I don't know what a car. Oh, no. I don't know what a cargo dry bag is. Well, and then he's. Oh, Cameron, are you still here? I'm just now seeing that you said you can't hang out. But I was just curious what a dry bag. Oh, large bag for. Oh, sure. Okay. Now I know what you're talking about. Large bag for roof of car for luggage. Yes. I've just never heard it called that. So I learned something new. That's great. Yes. A little boy might like that. I'm sorry. I shouldn't make gender generalities. I apologize. I just know that as a girl, I would have absolutely loved that when I played t-ball. But yes. If a little boy wants it, fabulous. It doesn't bother me at all. Oh, my nose. Sorry, guys. It's just itching like crazy. What's that mean? Some Somebody's thinking of you or something like that? But, so I'm going to, because I'm going through these a little faster than I expected to. What have you guys been up to? Let's Let's talk for a little bit before I start in on the eBay sales. Have a good night, camera run. The nose thing is kiss a fool. Okay, I've not heard that one. That might be a regional regionality or <laughs> regional thing. Because I've never heard that before. So what's the full saying if is if there is one? I, I always thought these things rhymed or something, but maybe not. Just that you if your nose is itching, you're gonna kiss a fool. I don't know. <laughs> so have I, Celestine, so have I. Definitely. Okay. 
well, see, I'm going to chalk that up, stick it back here, and probably never dig it back out again. But, hey, I've learned something new tonight, so that works for me. What's everybody's plans this week? I'm planning on working. <laughs> this is my last night off until Friday. If you don't know, I do work part-time. Well, it's getting to be full-time now, but um, I work in a group home with developmentally disabled adults. And it's one of the reasons that I do lives on Mondays and Saturdays because I'm always off on Mondays and Saturdays. But the rest of the week, who knows? <laughs> I never know when they're going to call me and ask me to work and I'm automatically scheduled for certain days during the week. So, and then our town on Friday night. Okay, here's a little tidbit about my town. My town is famous for a few things, but um, I've already covered in previous lives that it's the hometown of Marianne from Gilligan's Island. But um, what one of the other non- pop culture related things that we're famous for is we are the home of the national flat picking contest or the bluegrass festival, AKA Walnut Valley festival. And it's been going on for gosh, 40 some years probably now. And we have people who come in from around the world every year uh, for bluegrass music, and it's it takes over the town. It literally takes over the town, and I'm not I, I'm not complaining because I love I love bluegrass. I mean, I'm born and raised here. I have kind of have to love bluegrass, but I do love it. And um, anyhow, uh, I kind of lost my train of thought there. But anyhow, this Friday we are having the uh, Winfield Music Crawl or Cowley County Music, music Crawl. And it showcases a bunch of different music, but mainly bluegrass music, where all of the businesses downtown host a musician or a band, and they play either inside their store or out on the sidewalk outside of the stores. And that is this Friday. And where I volunteer at, um, Eagle Nest, Inc., which is a ladies resale upscale resale shop for charity. Um, we are hosting a blues guitarist and gosh darn it. I'm going to be there because I do love blues and I love guitar. I play guitar. And so I'm like, you know, I'm taking this Friday off and I'm going to go to the music crawl and I'm going to enjoy myself. So that's pretty much my week and not too shabby. Now, Darlene, I saw you post working on getting apartment clean, clean and in order. No oh, way to make me feel guilty. <laughs> My house is in such disarray right now just because I haven't felt like doing anything. And I got the kitchen semi presentable a couple of days ago and it's destroyed all over again, but the rest of the house has been destroyed for quite a while. I really need to work on that this coming weekend, but probably won't unless I manage to get my taxes done because I was going to do my taxes yesterday and I never got to it. So I think we all always need to clean. Everybody always needs to clean something. Nobody's house is spotless. And if it is, they're lying. <laughs> or they haven't been there in weeks. <laughs> Something like that. Well, Darlene, you need to come to Winfield. It is the third weekend in September every year. And it's amazing. We It takes place in our, in our um, fairgrounds. And we have a wooded area to the west of the main fairground area and then we have a wooded area to the south called the grove and people bring their campers in their tents and they camp out they they start piling into town weeks before the festival and it's it's really amazing um i've heard so i haven't been there in years just because i moved away 
for 15 years and then when I came back, I just, I got out of the habit of going. Um, I still enjoy it. It's just, it, well, it's too expensive too. And I'm usually working that weekend, but um, it's amazing. Some amazing acts, amazing acts. I, if you like bluegrass, really, I don't know how, if, I don't know how old you are and I don't want to guess or even ask, but I don't know if you, if you like bluegrass, if you've ever heard of Doc Watson, the musician, he used to play in Winfield at the bluegrass festival. And wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Amazing. But, um, anyhow, you should come sometime. It would be great. But in low income, so they do. Oh, oh, it took me a second to figure out what we were talking about again. Yeah, yeah, they're kind of picky. I, I used to live in low-income housing. I understand. They're quite picky about things. Yeah. You're not old. Nobody's old. We're, none of us are old. Okay. We're only as old as we feel. And I'm trying to center my chair. Why can't I center my chair? That's a little bit better. <laughs> um, nobody's old. You're only as old as you feel. And sometimes I feel 18. And sometimes I feel 80. <laughs> we are not too far apart there. I am just a few years younger than you. For having stuff in boxes, what would they rather have it on the floor? I don't know. I remember when I lived in low-income housing, I was just out of high school. And, you know, maybe 19 years old, something like that, 20. No, I was probably about 18. But um, typical 18-year-old girl, I had clothes all over the floor of my bedroom. Because I'd pick up an outfit. Nope, don't like that one. Pick up another outfit. Nope, I don't like that one. And before I knew it, all my clothes were out of the closet and onto the floor. And yeah, I didn't feel like picking them up. <laughs> and I remember the housing manager came in, I guess, to fix something. I don't know why he was in my apartment. And I wasn't home. And he knew my father because small town Kansas. And I remember my father going, so... Your clothes are all over the floor. When are you going to pick those up? And I'm like, what? You know? And he said, yeah. He said, so-and-so just let me know I was being, that you were being a typical teenage girl. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, I was. He said, but pick them up. Okay. Will do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then 99 after feeling 80. Yeah. Today I'm feeling about, probably about 80. Oh, I had a cool snap and cold bothers my bones. That's why I'm wearing this jacket. I don't enjoy cold and damp. It was, yeah, it's, it's been raining off and on today. And that just, yeah, makes for a long day. Dreary. But, all right, let's go back to some solds. And let me scroll down here and get, get it all ready. All right, these are eBay solds. Some of them will look familiar to you. And some of them will not. Okay. First thing I sold was a ring. I'm trying to get it to load. There we go. This is a sterling silver priscillite ring. And I, yeah, pay no attention to the little hairs. You don't notice it till you zoom in on the picture after you've taken it. But this was is a beautiful cocktail ring that actually was, oh, that is blurry. Um, that was my mother's. And uh, she had a lot of jewelry. So 
so we couldn't keep it all. Oh my gosh. I am amazed that these sold as blurry as these pictures are. How did I not notice this when I listed it? But it did sell. It was a size 8, as you can tell. I cannot believe how bad these pictures are. I'm embarrassed <laughs> by how bad these pictures are. But um, it has a peacock detailing on the sides here, as you can see in this picture. Kind of look like peacock feathers or the circles on peacock feathers. Anyhow, beautiful ring. Beautiful. Sold it for $25.19, I believe. I'm finding out that when I look up solds, it doesn't, when I look up my own solds like that, it doesn't always give the correct price for the sale price. I don't know. It doesn't show when I took an offer, I guess is what I'm saying. Second thing that I sold were a set of stamps, rubber stamps, by Stampin' Up. Um, rubber stamps are a hard sell. In case you're interested in selling these, they are a hard sell. And um, long tail item, usually. I've had these listed hmm, maybe six months. Um, but they're from my own collection of stamps. I used to do crafting a lot. I just don't have time to do it anymore. So I started selling off my stash. This is a set of um, stamps that I never used. So... And actually, if I remember correctly, I bought them used from someone else. So they are now in the possession of their third owner. And hopefully they've been used now. <laughs> but didn't sell them for much. But like I said, they were for my own stash. So I really had nothing into them other than what I paid for them years ago. And so $9.24, happy with that. I wish my screen wouldn't go to the top every time like this. Hang on. Maybe I can do something different. We're going to play here for a second. There we go. This is a 1993 Muffy Vanderbear. Muffy Vanderbear. A Highland Fling doll or uh, bear. It's eight inches. Um, really cute. And I bought six or seven different... Muffy Vanderbear Bears at Goodwill oh, a few months ago for $1.99 a piece. And I thought that they would sell better than they did. So I just have continually lowered prices. And uh, I think I just sold my last one. Was it this one? No, I sold another one you'll see in a little bit. Um... And I'm finally done with them. But uh, I think he's cute. I guess I could do that so you could actually see him a little bit better. But they're cute. They are jointed and just really cute little bears. There's v Muffy Vander Bear and there's Muffy or Buffy Vander Hare. Which was a rabbit. I had the... Oh, I think I still have the rabbit. That's it. I still have the rabbit. I um, sold all the bears now. And... This sold really quickly. This is a Hager um, bulb planter. Pretty... Generic, pretty plain, but I buy anything I find that's Hager because I love Hager. And I believe that this sold the evening I listed it. So, very happy about that. But it's, I can't remember what the measurements were on it. Mm, how much were it? Were it? How much were it? <laughs> how much were the measurements? Uh, nine by five. So. And I sold it for seventeen twenty four. It had so I've I had it listed probably more than twelve hours because my sale prices don't kick in until twelve hours after I make a listing. If I have a, 
I run a sale almost constantly, varying percentages. And so I have it set up that any new listings that I make after a sale is going will be added to that sale. But eBay, it takes about 12 hours from the time you finalize that listing and, and you know make it live before the pricing for the sale goes into effect. So it had to have been 12 hours after I sold it. And, but it couldn't have been much more than that. So sold for $17.24. I believe I paid a dollar for this. I can't remember if it was an auction or garage sale. Oh, it was that garage sale. Um, not this past weekend, but the weekend before that the lady made me a bundle deal. So yeah, I think I had a dollar into this. Did it again, did it again. I meant to do open in new tab so that I don't have to keep scrolling down every time. Okay, enjoy yourself, darling, and uh, make sure you rest. You need to. Everybody needs to take a break every once in a while. The next thing that I have sold is a um, vintage sore, sore, sour, I, I, sore bag. Um, it's a velvet bag. This is actually a consignment piece that I am selling for a friend. And I've had it listed since, I think, October. Again, one of those things that I thought would sell for quite a bit more and didn't. And I kept lowering the price and lowering the price. And it finally sold. So $17. And that will all be going, well, the majority of it will be going to the actual person that I was selling it for. I take a percentage and uh, they get the rest. So, but it's really, here, let me. Let me bring up a better picture. I think it's really cool. I've never seen a bag like it before. It says German Renaissance festivity dress for ladies about 1510. Okay. I just keep thinking how hot some of those clothes had to have been back then. <laughs> New York. And then something that I didn't expect to sell. Ah, I did it again. Clicked the wrong button. But it did. And this was in a lot box that I got at an auction months ago. Just never got around to getting it listed because I didn't think it would sell. I'll be real honest. Um, this is a 4-H Club sing-along book from 1964. It is the Kansas 4-H Club. And it sold for almost $10. And it did not sell to someone in Kansas. So it, I think it was someone back east on the east coast. Maybe wrong about that. But it definitely wasn't anyone in Kansas. And I was really surprised about that. So maybe they were from Kansas and had moved away. I, I don't know. Or maybe they just collect 4-H things. I don't know. But uh, it's just a mimeograph pages of lyrics, song lyrics for the 4-H club. But I, I know that in the whole box of music-related paper ephemera, I couldn't have had more than $2 into the whole box, and I sold this one piece for $9, so very happy with that. And I got to learn not to scroll, or not to click on that, like, uh, I can't even talk while I'm trying to do this. Sorry, guys. I need to learn to open it in a new tab. That's what I was trying to say. I sold this hand-painted pitcher. It's a cider pitcher. So it's it's smaller. It's 
whoa, where's my hand? There we go. It's it's a smaller pitcher. It's not a big drink pitcher. Um, but I believe, again, that this was an auction piece. It might have been a garage sale piece. I just honestly can't remember. But I've had it listed for a few months, and it finally sold for $10.58. No huge sales this so far this month. Um, a lot of $10 and $15 sales, things like that. But I will take them. They are better than no sale at all. What I hope to do by showing this, uh, uh, doing a sold video like this or a sold live like this, is I want to I want you to understand how varied sales can be. Um, you know, it's not just tennis shoes, uh, Reeboks and Nikes and all of that that sell, and it's not just vintage tees that sell. Odd little items can sell too. You just never know. It's just a matter of meeting, matching up between a seller and a buyer and what they're wanting. So this was painted in 1976, and I'm trying to, by D. Baumgartner, which actually I know some Baumgartner, so I don't know if this was a local artist or not. I don't know a D. Baumgartner, but I do know some Baumgartners. So anyhow, sold for $10.58. And then this, I thought this was going to sell immediately after I got it. Now, I know that I've had it listed for over a year, and it wasn't even an expensive thing. It's just a card game called Civil War Wit. I thought because it had a whole bunch of um, Civil War photographs on the cards that some Civil War buff would really enjoy it, but it sat and sat and sat and sat and sat and sat and sat, and sat until... It sold this week. So um, I didn't get very much for it. I really thought I would get something more for it. Of course, I got about what it originally sold for, <laughs> $7.95. I, I know I sold it for 7 something. But um, I, I already got feedback from the person, and they love it. So I'm very happy that they bought it. And... Uh, just surprised me that it took as long as it did to sell. Um, something to show you guys that are learning about listing. Always photograph any condition issues, even if it's a box or a package. Because if they are a collector, they're going to want to know. And if you don't show those little pieces of damage, no matter how minuscule you may think they are, you're going to get a return if it's for a collector. So always take photographs. And also, if it's something older, um, I don't mean like three or four years, but if it's something vintage, don't take the price tags off. My opinion, don't take the price tags off for two reasons. Um, if they're collecting it because it's old and it's new in package, they're going to like that sticker more than likely because they're going to get a kick out of what it's originally sold for. And number two, if you're removing the sticker, you could damage the packaging. And that goes right back to what I was saying about um, collectors want the packaging to be as pristine as possible. Awesome. $7.31. So I sold it for almost what the original selling price was. <laughs> All right, now this is a sob story. This is such a sad thing. Okay, um, those of you who have been in my live chats before will know that very often I will sell something on eBay that maybe I've had listed for months, and I will, I will sell it because I put it in my antique booth, and it will sell almost immediately. Well, this was one of those things. I can't tell you. I, well, I know that I've had this salt and pepper shaker set for over a year. Um, no bites on eBay. No bites on Etsy. 
or any of the other platforms. So I put it in my um, antique booth here in town and it almost immediately sold. Great, right? Until I got home with them for, you know, had to go to the antique mall, pick them up, came home with them, was bringing them inside and dropped them and they broke. <laughs> so this isn't an actual sold. I had to refund the buyer. That was frustrating. Very frustrating. And I did it again where I didn't do open in new tab. Okay. This is something. I know I got this at Goodwill quite a few months ago, but um, really didn't know anything about it. It was just different. It's called Weird Love, and it's a comic book compilation. I, I, I don't know. It's not, like, racy, really, or anything like that. It's more tongue-in-cheek than anything. But uh, it had some issues, as you can see here. But hardcover books at my Goodwill are $1.99. I took a shot. And... I don't know if I've got interior pictures. I should have had interior pictures. Oh, yeah, I did. Um, so it's, it's old school comics meets new sensibilities. I, I don't know. But somebody liked it. They bought it. Let's see. I was a waterfront girl. Okay. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a little racy, but not for today's day and age. But sold it for $7.85. Didn't make a whole heck of a lot off of it. I originally, I think I had it listed for $24.95 and have steadily dropped it down. So. But it's it's different. Your hard your hardbacks are four for a dollar. Paperbacks are a dollar a piece here. Hardcovers are a dollar ninety nine. I told myself when I started doing videos that I would not do bolos. Um, mainly because I didn't want to get someone's hopes up. I didn't want them to spend money on something that turned out it wasn't really a bolo for them. It just happened to be a bolo for me. Bolo is a be on the lookout. Um, but I'm going to break my rule and tell you guys that if you find Amiibo cards, A-M-I-I-B-O cards, which are Nintendo cards, um, usually Switch, and usually Zelda or um, um, Super Mario Brothers, Super Smash Brothers, you know, things like that, buy them if you can get them really cheap. What I did was I found a small wallet full of amiibo cards at a goodwill in derby which is about half an hour from here i didn't know what amiibo cards were but i liked the wallet and the whole thing was 99 cents maybe a dollar 99 i can't recall now anyhow it was full of these i think there were probably 15 to 18 of them in there it's been a while um, but they have been steady sellers for me and I'm selling them anywhere between eight and $9 a piece. So I'm definitely making quite a bit of money off of these. I've already sold more than half of them. So for a dollar 99 at most investment, I did pretty well on those. And I just hit the wrong button again. Hang on. I'm going to fix this. Because I'm tired of... I, I've got to get in the practice of hitting open in new tab. All right. This was a bit of retail arbitrage at Walmart. This is a DreamWorks um, Spirit play set. 
And it's Marcella and Mystery. Mystery is the horse. This is Marcella, not the other way around. No. <laughs> um, and, okay. So we have one Walmart in our town. And then there's a town about eight miles south of us that has a Walmart as well. Our Walmart clearance sucks. <laughs> it's just terrible. There's never anything good in there. The Walmart eight miles south is fabulous for retail arbitrage, but it's hidden retail. It's hidden clearance. Um, how do I explain hidden clearance? If it's in the clearance aisle here in, in Winfield, if it's in the clearance aisle here and it's marked $4.99, it's going to be $4.99. At the other Walmart south of here, if it's marked $9.99, it might really ring up at $3. <laughs> I don't know why. But uh, so I've learned to scan items very quickly clearly and closely when I'm at the other Walmart doing retail arbitrage. This was one of those items that uh, I believe it was showing a clearance price of $7.99 and I got it for like $2.50 and I bought quite a few of them actually. Didn't end up making the big money that I thought I would. I mean I made seven, I, I sold it for $7.50 so I made $5 before fees but um, I'm still learning about retail arbitrage. I haven't done a whole lot of it. I'm just happy that I got my money back out of it because I have bought a few things on retail arbitrage that I have not made my money back on. But it's just something to keep in mind. If you're going to do retail arbitrage at Walmart, scan the items before you get up to the checkout. And if you find a lot of good deals like that where things are ringing up less than they're marked piece of advice, go to the automatic checkout and not a cashier's checkout, especially if you're buying multiple quantities. You don't want to tip your hand. Um, but anyhow, this was just a retail arbitrage piece. Mickey, Mickey Mouse. Hey, Carl, how are you? Welcome to my live stream. I'm just going over some of the things that I've sold the, about the last week. So, uh, this, this was a Disney Mickey Mouse mug that I believe also was a Goodwill find for 49 cents. He is 3D. Sticks up there just a little bit. And no chips, no cracks. I don't think it was ever used. It's not necessarily old by any means, but it's sold for $7.55 and I spent $0.49 cents on it. So pretty good return. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story about these mugs here. These are Whataburger mugs. Whataburger is a fast food burger joint, obviously burger joint. That is based out of Texas. We do not have Whataburgers up here in Kansas. I have never been to a Whataburger. I don't know that I'll ever be at a Whataburger. But um, about a year ago, no, it would have been before the pandemic. So probably closer to a year and a half ago, I was at an auction and I bought one of these mugs. I just like the color of it. It's kind of a butterscotchy color. And uh, listed it almost immediately, and I still have it. Um, two weeks ago, I went to an auction. They had a pair of them, and I got them both for under a dollar. And listed them as a pair and sold them almost immediately. <laughs> so, But uh, I guess there are Whataburger collectors out there. And I, anybody who's got Whataburger, maybe you guys can help me out here. I'm assuming this was a mug that you bought at the restaurant and you could bring it in for free refills or something like that. I, I'm assuming so. But they're a real pretty color and not some not a color that you see every day. And I like the handles too. These have no chips, no cracks. 
And quite honestly, I can't remember whether I sold them to somebody in Texas or not. I'm not going to look it up right now because you would see their address and that's not fair. But $22.49 when I was all in for under a buck. I'm happy with that kind of a sale. Um, oh, you have them in, in Louisiana? I didn't know what how far they reached. I know they have them in Oklahoma. And honestly, I think somebody said that they're getting one in Wichita, which is about an hour from me. Um, but I've never been there. My nephew lives in Texas. I'm sure he's been there many times, but not I. Ah, yes. Here is the other bear, the Muffy Vendor Bear that I sold. Like I said, I sold two in, <clears throat> sorry, two in under a week. So I was pretty pleased. Now, this one I sold for a little bit more, I believe. So, but this was a... Uh, I'm climbing mountain climbing, but really cute bears, and they all had their tags. So, but I think they're cute, cute. But I don't want to keep them. I'm in this business to sell. <laughs> And I did not sell this to the same person that I sold the other bear to. So keep glancing down at my phone. Make sure I'm not missing anything in chat. Ah, hit the wrong button again. Oh, well, too late now. This was a squirrel print. No, this is a um, drawing, original drawing of a squirrel. I think he's cute. The frame has some issues, but. The, I will tell you, and hopefully this um, buyer never, the artist is Bob Haynes, it was made in 1972. Um, hopefully the buyer never sees this video. I'm not, you know, not outing her or anything, but it just, it was interesting to me. She actually wanted this for someone's birthday. And she messaged me on Thursday of last week. And said, I want it here by Wednesday. Can you overnight it? Well, I don't know that she was assuming. I'm going to come back full screen for a moment. I, I'm i not going to say she was assuming that I would pay the overnight, the extra postage. But I wasn't going to. <laughs> uh, so I told her that I would be happy to overnight it. But if I could get her zip code so that I could figure out what the charges would be. And um, so she sent me her zip code. I looked it up and I messaged her back and I said, well, I said, according to your location, this should, I never promise when the post office is going to deliver something, but I said, it should take two days to get to you using priority mail. And the shipping cost is $11. If you wish me to overnight it to you, I am more than happy to do so. However, the shipping charge, and I kid you not, was going to be $50 roughly. She very quickly agreed that second day was, second day priority was going to be good enough. I just, I was like, no, you, you surely you don't want to spend $50 to ship this $15 item. Um, but, and she didn't. I was glad. I mean, I would have done it, but because it, it's her money. She can do what she wants, but it just didn't make sense to me. When it was Thursday, she didn't have to have it till Wednesday. So it was almost a full week. Now, I haven't checked to see if it was delivered. Hang on. While I don't have this on um, screen share, let me look to see if that was delivered. I just now thought about that. I hope it was. Please say it was delivered. Yes, it was delivered today. So she got it in plenty of time. That's good. <laughs> I'm glad. Okay. I'm going to go back to this. 
And we're going to look at a, a ring that I sold. Now, this was actually my own ring that I sold. My mother and I had the same ring, but this one was mine. And very pretty sterling silver marquee cut CZ. I mean, it's not a not a real diamond. I would hope not if I sold it for $15. <laughs> but it's a real pretty ring. And I'm sure someone will love it. It's got a few scratches here and there, but... Honestly, those scratches show up a lot clo lot better in these pictures than they do in real life. The size 8. But I wore the heck out of this ring, so. But I don't, I just don't wear jewelry very much anymore. I think I've had the same pair of earrings on for months now. But uh, anyhow, so that was that sale. And again, that was a ring that was I had put in my um, antique booth. So yet again, put it in your antique booth. It'll sell on eBay. And the same day that I sold that ring, I sold another ring. That, guess what, was in my antique booth. So I went and picked up both of these rings. And this is a sterling silver and green simulated stone. But again, real pretty ring. And again, this was mine. So. And again, 1088. Didn't make a whole heck of a lot out of it, off of it. But I wore that ring for years. I got my money's worth out of it. Oops. Alrighty. I'm skipping over a few things, believe it or not. I'll go to this. This was a Goodwill find. This was a True Rock brand Puerto Rico football jersey. I mean, it wasn't an actual jersey. It's a shirt made to look like a jersey. But uh, it was in mint condition. Not a snag. Not a stain. Size large, which I, when I'm looking at clothing, which I don't sell a lot of clothing and I don't look at a lot of clothing to buy, but this one caught my eye. It was on an end cap. Um, but I, if I'm looking for clothes, I will do large and extra large when I'm looking. I, I won't even look at smalls and mediums um, just because the large and extra larges sell so much faster. Large, extra large, and higher. The higher, the better. But I think I paid a dollar ninety nine for the shirt. Sold it for seventeen ninety nine. I did it again, didn't I? Forgot to open it in a new tab. Ah, oh, that's all right. We're almost done. And then I don't know if you guys remember those of you who have been in the chat for a while. I mean, more recently. I had this, I, oh, I know what it was, Saturday. I did a live stream where I talked about some of my favorite listings. Well, gosh almighty, this darn thing was in that favorite listings um, video. And it sold almost, well, probably within 24 hours of that video. So I don't know if it sold to a viewer that I just don't know. Or someone who stayed silent in chat. I'm not sure. Maybe it was a friend of someone who was in chat. I don't know. But it sold. It is a vintage snack master sandwich maker. In pristine condition, really. For its age. It's extremely clean. No scratches to the nonstick coating. Just really a really nice piece. I believe I had $3 into it, sold it for $13.60. Not a huge windfall, but still, a sale is a sale. Move stuff out so I can move some more stuff in. And then I sold this pair of earrings. Now, I do know that this was a Goodwill find. 
These are screw back earrings, vintage turquoise. Really pretty, but I could not wear screw back earrings for any length of time. No way. Um, I guess they're better than clip on, but if, oh, wow, I'm really finding out that some of my earlier photography was really bad. That is blurry. Goodness. But anyhow, screw back earrings, um, you don't find them too often, and a lot of people actually prefer them. Uh, people who are opposed to any type of body piercings. And so if you find them, they do sell. They may not sell quickly, but they will sell. And uh, that's what these did. Sold them for $9.67. Earrings at my local Goodwill are $0.99. Cents. So gives you an idea of my profit margin there. Never like sending stuff where they need it as soon as possible. I don't either. The pressure is on even when you tell them that um, you can't guarantee it. They still get angry with you if it doesn't arrive on time. You can't win. <laughs> but this worked out. I'm, I'm glad that I took a second there to see if it had been delivered yet. So, all right. Next thing I have here is a rather tall vase. This is, okay, you talk about you don't like shipping, Carl. You don't like shipping um, things when you're under the gun of it getting there in a, in a certain length of time. I don't either, but I also don't like shipping things like this. <laughs> I don't like shipping fragile glass. But guess what I sell the most of? Fragile glass. <laughs> I've gotten pretty good at packing things, but this one's worrying me just a little bit. I will be relieved when I see that it was delivered and hopefully get positive feedback. But this is a real pretty frosted blue vase. Um, like I said, it's rather large. But it's real pretty. I actually had two of these. I purchased these from a fellow reseller, local fellow reseller friend of mine. And she didn't want them. And uh, I bought them from her. I think I only had a couple dollars into them. Sold for nine fifty six. I this was a long tail item. I sold one almost immediately, and it's been um, at least a year since then. So this has been in my store for quite some time. Another thing too, I boy, I'm breaking my rules about. Uh, um, bolos but another thing to look in to keep in mind when you're at garage sales or estate sales or auctions is patches uh, of course it depends on the um subject of the patch this i didn't think would ever sell i'll be real honest with you this is an aahper fitness instructor patch unused um well, nope, I guess it wasn't unused. Nope, it is unused. I had to really look at it for a second there. Uh, I don't even know what A-A-H-P-E-R is. I didn't look it up that closely because I didn't think it would sell. I just threw it up there just on the off chance that it would. Um, I got this in a lot of probably 100 different patches. And I'm down to, I think I have maybe 20, 25 of those original 100 patches still for sale uh, different things. Main, most of them were bowling patches, quite honestly. But this one was thrown in the mix. And I threw it up for, I think, thir yeah, $13.99 was the original asking price. It was on sale for $10.49. I had maybe $2, $3 in the whole lot of 100 So happy with that. And this is actually going to, um, to um, Hawaii, of all places. So... It is shipping across the ocean and uh, hope it makes that person very happy. I actually do know what A-A-H-P-E-R is, but I don't, I did know, but I don't remember now. Physical Education something, American Association, American Association of, no, Health Professional so I, I, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. 
Almost done, guys. Almost done. Just a few more. Oops. Oi, come on, button. Button, button. Who's got the button? Okay. This is a Bakelite handled um, angel food cake cutter or terror server. Well, I don't know. I just remember my mom had one of these when I was a kid. Looked almost identical to this. And uh, I love Bakelite. I don't have very many pieces of Bakelite myself. I actually have my mom's um, angel food cake cutter like this. But that's really about it. But this was in really good shape. Um, the tines, there's a couple of tines that are a little bit bent but not overly so. I mean, like that, you can just see it's just a little bit bent there. But um, really in very good shape for its age. Again, not a big ticket item by any means. It's more of a bread and butter, but $8, and I think I bought it for $0.29 cents at my local Goodwill. So not too shabby. And some of you will remember being in my live when I was listing all this Mary Kay makeup. Well, I sold my first piece of it for $11.99. I bought these discontinued um, pieces of makeup for a dollar a piece. So a dollar into 12, let's say 10 after all fees and everything. Not a bad return on that. This was a brow liner in blonde. Had blonde and dark blonde. Now I just have dark blonde. And then another doll. This was um, another one of my mother's dolls. Dolly Dingle. She had quite a few Dolly Dingle dolls over the years. And um, I don't like dolls. I've made it very clear I don't like dolls. But if I was going to have a doll, it would probably be a Dolly Dingle just because, let's be honest, look at that face. That face is adorable. But I'm not going to go out and buy a doll because I just don't like dolls. But it is cute. I mean, those chubby cheeks. Come on. It's a cute doll. And it's in really good shape. My mom took very good care of her dolls. And this one's musical, too. Plays uh, Hello, Dolly, of, of course. And it was a good sale. I listed it and sold it within one day for $45. I did take an offer. Um, he originally or he, she, the buyer, uh, started off offering 30. We met in the middle at 44 99 Happy with that. And then I think we have one more item. Oh, nope, two more. Two more. Again, this was a retail arbitrage, again, at Walmart. Um, this was one of those that I didn't make hardly anything on, but at least I got it out of my... Um, out of my storeroom, um, Battle of the Sexes game. I know nothing about the game. I've never heard of the game before I bought this at Walmart. I believe that I paid like $4 for it. So I basically broke even. But um, not every purchase that you make in retail arbitrage or even thrifting is going to be a home run. And this was one of those that I was just happy to get my money back. And the final item that I have sold is, guess what? Another doll. It's been a good week for dolls. I want to get rid of these. My mother had like a hundred of them. So <laughs> I want to get rid of them. This is a Jenny doll by Vogue Doll Company. And this is Jenny Geranium because she's got geraniums on her dress. Again, this is something that I think I just listed a few days ago. So, look. Hi, I'm Ginny. <laughs> it's a cute doll. It's not an expensive doll. 
but it is cute as far as dolls go. It comes with a um, planting card and a little plastic trowel and a plastic flower pot and little packets of seeds. Not real seeds in there, but little, little seed packets. I give them an A for effort, for detail on these. Pretty cool. But anyhow, 1874, it was on sale for 24 from original price of 24.99, 1874 and it is out of my house. Happy happy. So, anyhow, wow, it is getting kind of dark in here. Sorry guys. Um that's what I've sold so far this month, the first 10 days, first one third of the month, and not a huge period, but it's definitely picked up the last few days, which I'm grateful for. The first five or six days of the month were dismal, really, really slow sales on um, all platforms, not just eBay. Um, eBay has picked up some, but where I've been doing a lot of my sales the last 24 hours has been on Facebook Marketplace. I attribute that mainly to the fact that I finally got around to getting some things cross-posted to Facebook Marketplace. I hadn't done any cross-posting on there for two to three weeks, just time management issues. Um, so I finally buckled down and got some things cross posted and that seemed to light a fire under my Facebook marketplace sales. Um, I've been steady, uh, listing on eBay, maybe not the numbers I normally would list, um, due to just life, but I have been trying to list at least a few every day. Um, so I really don't know why the slowdown on eBay, but I'm glad that it seems to be over and I hope to God that I'm not jinxing it <laughs> because this is my main livelihood. So we need to keep those sales going, right? Let's catch up with chat a little bit. I don't think it'll take too much. Oh, you've been, you've been the last, you, you've been the opposite of me, Carl. Well, see that. And I know it's just coincidence. I know it is, but it does make me wonder because I, if you belong to any of the reselling groups on a Facebook, you have heard all of the conspiracy theories about eBay. And some of those conspiracy theories, most of them I just throw out. There are a few that make me kind of go, Hmm, I wonder. <laughs> and we'll never know. We'll never get the proof, but there are people who think that eBay does kind of a rolling thing where one week this batch of YouTube sellers will have good sales. You know, let's, let's get their listings out there and visible and then put the brakes on that group. And this week, this group's going to get the visibility. And then next week, this group's going to get the visibility. It makes you kind of wonder when you hear things like that, where we basically, you and I have just flip-flopped our business for the last week or so. Yeah, they, exactly. They try to find patterns in the chaos. That's exactly it. I, I agree. I, I fully do believe that everything is random like this, but it, when things like this happen, it makes you kind of go, hmm, I wonder. <laughs> I don't drink the Kool-Aid, guys. I don't. Um there are people who say you have to end and relist items to jumpstart the algorithm on eBay. Um, there are people who say, no, don't end your items and relist. Just tweak your listing. It is what it is. Everybody's different. And you can't compare. And it's hard I because I catch myself doing it. You can't compare yourself to another reseller because it's comparing apples to oranges. Unless you guys have the same number of listings and the exact same items and exact same prices of all those listings, 
you're comparing apples to oranges. So do I get a little frustrated when I hear people just having fabulous weeks of sales and I'm sitting there going, listening to the birds chirping? Yeah, I get a little frustrated, but I don't blame that seller. I don't blame eBay necessarily. I might get a little frustration, frustrated, but I blame the only person you can really blame is yourself, unless there's some technical glitch. And eBay does have glitches, just like every other platform is going to have a glitch. Um, but more likely than not, you can only blame yourself for slow sales. A, you're not listing. B, your prices are too high. C, you're not listing the right items. You know, you're listing items nobody else wants but you. Um, D, your listings are crap. They're not, they're, there's um, not enough information in the description. There's not enough information in the title. There's typos in the title. Um, on and on and on and on. You don't offer returns or you do offer returns or your shipping's too high or there's too many variables there, but the grand scheme of things is if you're not selling things, it's on you for the most part. That's the way I look at it. That, that's my two cents. Do I get frustrated? Yes. Do I get upset? Yes. Do I get jealous? Yes. But then I have to take a step back and be like, okay, why is this happening? And have I done everything within my ability to change those things? So Marie, Hey, how are you? You just missed me going over all my sales for the last 10 days. Where the heck were you? <laughs> just kidding. Just a kidding. I'm going to have to get my overhead lamp light um, fixed. It's just the bulbs, but I can't reach up there right now. Because uh, it's kind of dark in here. It's kind of dreary. Oh, my goodness gracious. How long we've been doing this? Almost an hour and a half. That's about my average. Not too shabby. Oh, you were cooking dinner? What's for dinner? And if it's good, I'm on my way. No, I already ate. <laughs> oh. I just fixed something quick and easy tonight because I'm cooking at work the rest of the week. So I didn't feel like cooking tonight. Hi, Angie. How are you? Welcome to my live stream. <laughs> really cool well welcome 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 leftover chicken and cheesy mac you know that sounds pretty good i actually kind of had cheesy mac in a way i had one of those Bags of pasta sides. Yeah. Fancy cheese. Fancy mac and cheese. <laughs> Angie, just to catch you up a little bit, I go live on Mondays, most Mondays, not every Monday, and most Saturdays, not every Saturday. It just depends on my life. Um, usually at 7 o'clock Central Time. I'm very informal. I Sometimes I will list and gab with you guys. Sometimes I will ship and gab with you guys. Um, last Saturday, three days ago, two days ago, <laughs> two days ago, I did a uh, just a montage of my favorite listings I currently have on my eBay store. Tonight I showed what sold so far in the month of May on, on eBay and Facebook Marketplace. Um, I am a reseller on eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, Macari, and Facebook Marketplace, in case you didn't know. And uh, that's my life. I finally listed my Tiffany lamps, but they're plastic. 
Okay. You're not sure about the comps. Tell you what. Hang on a minute. Hit the right button. There we go. Let's do this. Come on. Share. Okay. Hang on a minute. You said it's Tiffany, but it's the shade is plastic or the base is plastic. Give me just a little bit of info. Well, I'm not quite everywhere yet. I'm actually wanting to branch out to a couple more platforms. I just haven't found the time yet. Let me fix something here. There, that's better. You can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Is the is the shade what's plastic? And what is the motif on the on the what's the style of the shade? Is it a rounded shade like um, this one here, or is it more Art Deco, like this one here? Can you give me an idea what we're looking at? Hi, Justin. How are you, hon? Okay. How big of a lamp? Are they shades or just the whole lamp? And how big? Okay, they're square. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, whole lamp. Okay. Hmm. And where did you, did you say you already have them listed? Are they kind of like this here, arts and crafts style? Oh, okay. And you have them listed on eBay? Let me type this in. Okay, I found your listing. Um, but the lamp shades are plastic. Now, what about the bases? Are they plastic or are they glass? They're very pretty. Oh, they're very pretty. Oh, they're like plexiglass. Okay, okay. Hmm.
Okay. I am not well versed on Tiffany lamps, although I do have a couple of them that were my mom's. But hang on. I'm thinking that because they're plexi and not glass. You may have them listed a bit too high, but that's just my opinion, okay? It's just my opinion. I'm just looking here. Can you tell how old they are by any chance? Um, something that I would suggest to you is... Um, to uh, take a picture of the plug and it, add that to your listing, the plug and the cord, because a lot of people will use that to get an idea of how old a lamp is. Your pictures are good, don't get me wrong, but that's just something I always make sure that I do on um, lamps. I think I can show you here. What I'm talking about. No, nope, maybe not. I was thinking this was my listing. I sold a lamp just like this. <laughs> so I thought this was my listing, but it's not. But I, I always make sure that I get pictures of the plug and the cord. Um... It's got the dial that turns them on and off. Okay, if it's got a dial that turns them on and off, then I definitely would take a picture of that too, unless I just missed it in your pictures. Let me go back to your listing. Oh, you mean the, the switch. Okay, I was... That's not the not what I was thinking in my head when you said dial, but it took me a second. I saw it here in this photo. Yeah, right there. You're talking about that. Um, unfortunately, newer newer lamps can still have that switch. So that doesn't really help a lot as far as dating the lamps. The idea that they're plexiglass, that's what keeps bothering me. Um, and you're sure they're plexiglass and not glass. I mean, just making sure. Okay, let me see here. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I see what you're talking about now. It just took me a second to figure it out. I'm just trying to see what I can figure out here. Um, you see, everything that I'm seeing... Is showing glass, not plexi. And I just, I mean, my opinion without spending a lot of time here boring everybody else is that you might have them priced a little bit too high. I may be wrong. But with them being plexi, I want to look at your listing one more time. Okay, I just want to make sure you actually had it stating that they were plastic or acrylic or plexiglass or something like that. Um, oh, they're really pretty. They are really pretty.
Let me check something else. Type in the right thing that would help, Gina. Um, shopping. Table. Mission style. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah, without going through every listing, hang on. Okay. I just wanted to look at yours again for comparison's sake. Without going through every listing that I'm seeing and checking to see whether it's a glass base or shade or a plexiglass, plastic, whatever, it's hard for me to tell. Um, actually, let me do one more thing. Show you guys a, a tip or trick. I'm going to save a copy of this picture to my desktop. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, hang on a second. I'm going to use my phone. And I will come back here. There we go. Let me let me get on my phone real quick. Be a little bit faster, maybe. And I'll still talk you through what I'm doing. Right now, I'm just looking up your listing again on my phone. Just Tiffany style mission design stained glass. Table lamps, plastic. Oh, see, and I just now saw that you you actually say plastic in the listing, or did you just add that? Am I losing my mind in the uh, title? <laughs> yeah, Cherish is a great site for that, too. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to take a screenshot of your main photo and then I'm going to take it to Google Lens and see what it brings up. Nothing exact, which doesn't surprise me. But it was worth a shot. That's really quite close there. Hang on a minute. Hmm. Not coming up with anything real quickly, and I'm sorry about that. Um, I'll be real honest. I have a Tiffany-style lamp of my mother's that I need to get listed, but I've been putting it off basically because I don't want to ship it. <laughs> Shipping's a bear, and when you're dealing... Mine, mine is glass and not plastic, and... Uh, I just, I'm, I'm afraid to, I'm afraid to ship it quite honestly, but so I, I, I have 
some knowledge of Tiffany, not a lot of knowledge of Tiffany, but my gut's just telling me you've got those a little too high. I, I don't know. I, I don't want you selling them too cheap either. I guess if nothing else, keep them listed as is. And if you get interest, then you know your price is, your price is pretty good. Um, if you don't get any nibbles after a few weeks, you can always lower your price. You can't raise it once you sell it. That's about all I can tell you on that. I'm I'm so sorry. I'll keep I'll keep your listing up on my screen and maybe if I get a chance I'll do some more research for you, okay? Wait, hang on. What's what's happening here? I'm catching up. What did you pick up tonight in our listing? Go to Tiffany board games. Yeah, shipping is going to be horrible. Let me check something. Oh, honey, you need to change. Yeah. Mm. You need to change your listing real quick because there is no way you're shipping that for $25. There is no way you're going to be able to ship those lamps for $25. So please change that as soon as possible. Use, um, you, blah, blah, blah. use calculated shipping. And make sure you under you have, are listing when you're when you're doing your calculated shipping. Put in the correct measurements for the box you're going to use to ship those, because there is no way you're going to ship those for twenty five dollars. It's that's just no. There's no way. <laughs> um, at least not unless you're going to you know like throw them in a trash compactor first, and I don't think you want to do that. Um, you shipped some light covers, five inches, four of them for a hundred dollars. Good for you, Angie. That's great. Nice. Yeah, but definitely check your shipping. Um, I mean, you're not clear across the country from me. You're just a couple of states away, but still, I'm showing $25 shipping from your location to my location, and I just don't see how that's possible. Um, I'm going to come over here and hang on. I'm trying to do something real quick. I apologize, guys. Give me just a second. If I can remember my own name. <laughs> Goodness gracious, that was terrible. I totally spaced out on Vintage Baby by Gina. I have no idea why. Hang on. I'm trying to bring up terrible. YouTube. I got to hit. I totally Stop Spaced there. Out on Stop. Baby by Gina. Stop. I have no idea. What Stop. There we go. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Because I need to mod some people. Add moderator. Add moderator. Add moderator. Add moderator. All right. Who doesn't have a wrench? <laughs> who doesn't have a wrench? <laughs> you decided you need some mac and cheese sausage. Who doesn't have a wrench yet? I'm scan scrolling up to see. Marie, did I get you? I think I did. I got Justin.
I think I've got everybody. I know I've got you, Angie. Okay, let me refresh that screen and let me see what you've got here now, what it's showing now. 4454. Well, that's better. Um, and you put what what size did you put in for your um, shipping box? I just I just know that um, sorry, I was on the wrong screen there. It was freaking me out. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, um, I just know that if you go over 12 by 12 by 12, at least if you're shipping USPS and you change it to economy. Oh, okay. All right. That makes a difference too. Um, you know, if you go over 12 by 12 by 12 at the USPS, your, your uh, shipping rate increases quite a bit. Okay. So you're going parcel select. Yeah, that's probably not too far off then. I can't see the measurements you put in. That's not something that a buyer can see. So I just wanted to double check with you that you've got your measurements of the box you're going to use. And then, of course, the weight correct. I just don't. I, too many times I've seen people in the, in the uh, Facebook groups and in chat groups that have sold something for $100 and then come to find out their shipping is $120. And they had free shipping or something like that. And they end up losing money on the deal. And I don't want that to happen to you. So. Anywho. Thanks for the great question, though. And I am honored that you ask for advice about that for me. I appreciate that. Um, I wish I had a more definite answer for you on the value. Um, I'd have to do quite a bit more research to give you a definite answer on that. But um, I know that there were some really good suggestions in chat for you to check out Cherish and replacements, things like that. Um, all good, all good advice. Research, research, research until you've got it down and you know for sure you're selling it for the right amount or look at it this way list it for what you want out of it and then if you sell it for that amount you should be happy you know i just don't want i also don't want you thinking that you're selling it for a price and then it's really worth five times that too i don't know Yeah, Angie, honey, I've been doing this a year and a half and I still learn something new every single day. And I know there are people who have been doing this 10 years and 20 years and they still learn new things. So there is just so many, if this, then this, if this, then this, but if this, not this. And unfortunately, so many people learn the hard way and there are so many people out there that you can ask these questions to that there shouldn't you you shouldn't have to learn it the hard way unfortunately sometimes that's the only way it sticks with people is if they get hit in the pocketbook um but there's so many resellers that are so willing to help out the newer resellers um, and even just on YouTube, there are so many wonderful resellers out there that you can go to with question after question, after question, after question, and they don't get tired of it. And that's wonderful. And, and I hope to be that kind of a person for the newer resellers. I have unfortunately not been doing it long enough to know all of the answers, but if I can't answer it, I will definitely try to point you in the right direction. Okay, so never be afraid to ask me any questions. Never be able to be, never be afraid to ask a lot of people those questions. In fact, every single person in this chat, I'm sure will be more than willing to help you out in any way, shape or form. Okay. All right. Well, peoples, I, 
I'm enjoying these. I really am, guys. The more I do these live streams, the more I enjoy them. And I am enjoying getting to know all of you guys. And I thank you all for showing up. Some of you show up every single day live that I do and that's wonderful. Some of you can only show up occasionally and I appreciate each and every one of you and I know that everybody's time is at a premium nowadays. So I'm going to get out of here because I think my dog's trying to tell me that he needs to go potty. So I'm going to have to go let him outside. But um, I will see you guys again on Saturday 7 o'clock central here. And I probably will see a lot of you in other people's live streams throughout the week, if at all, if I get any time between jobs. And uh, anyhow, have a wonderful week, a safe week, a fun week. Don't work yourself to death, please. And we'll come back and see each, see each other on Saturday. You guys take care. Bye-bye.